Hello and welcome back to the Naked Marriage Podcast. We are Dave and Ashley Willis. And on this podcast, we undress the truth about sex, intimacy, and lifelong love. And we are continuing in our Summer Quickie series where we are answering your questions. We are devoting about 15 minutes to one of your questions. You can leave those if you haven't done so already at nakedmarriagepodcast.com. And today's question is one where literally probably every day we receive a question or two about this topic. So I'm really excited for us to be able to dive into this today. Yeah. And it's kind of one of those hot button topics. It is. Because it uh, it can be a really tricky dynamic and it, it has to do with the dynamic of in-laws in a relationship with in-laws and we've we found that this is one of the top sources of, of conflict and tension in marriage and certainly one of the top things we get written about in fact yeah. so much so that we're in the very early stages of working on a book yeah all about all about in-law relationships and how to protect and safeguard your marriage have boundaries in place and also create a, a healthy multi-generational family uh, and it can be so tricky because, you know, every family, even the best of them can be a little messy at times. So let's dive into today's specific question. Thank you, by the way, for those who write questions. Um, The questions we're answering on air are the ones submitted at nakedmarriagepodcast.com. But you can also write us on social media. We're at Dave and Ashley Willis on Instagram. You can look us up on Facebook on the marriage page. uh, And we, we do our best to answer questions there as well. Uh, but we really appreciate your questions. They, they guide really all the content we create here at Exo Marriage. Today's question says, I feel like my mother-in-law plays me and my husband against each other. Not only that, but she expects him to take care of her. She says, it's his job. And I really feel like eventually it's going to cause problems between the two of us. She is the main reason why me and my husband argue. She's so manipulating. What advice would you give? And Mm. this is tough because the son, the husband is caught in this position of of feeling like I need to honor my mom. That's biblical, honor your your father and mother. But at the same time, when it starts happening at the expense of your marriage, uh, then that gets really out of bounds because God's laws of priority he places for for relationships, your spouse and your marriage has to become your very first priority. And we see this dynamic, when we see this dynamic the most, the the one being described here, it's usually where either... um, there, that that in-law, that mother-in-law in this case, is either single through divorce or through being a widow, mm-hmm. or if she is married, it's not a strong marriage, and right. that like she she doesn't have like partnership there, and so she leans on a child for kind of a codependent level of getting spouse level support, emotional support or whatever kind of support yeah. from a child instead of from a spouse because the spouse isn't there or isn't isn't there in the way they want them to be there, and that gets really messy. It does. And, and you know, I, I'm sure that her husband feels very much caught in the middle. And that's why it's such a dilemma. I mean, really, because we want to have good relationships with our parents and with our in-laws. But when they kind of pin us against, you know, between our spouse and them, it's like, it's either us or the, or your spouse, you know, it's just a terrible place to be. And it really does. It causes so much friction. And I, you know, I, I can tell that she has compassion for her husband. Like, I don't feel like this, this wife is like, you know, throwing him under the bus or anything. I think she has compassion, but she mentioned in here that literally, literally like almost every fight they have is because of her. And so clearly there needs to be boundaries put yeah. in place. And that's yeah. the key word here is boundaries. Now, what's so hard when it comes to putting boundaries between you and your in-laws or your parents it is, is they may not like it. Like, and that's, that's the hard part of this. And I don't know what kind of personality your husband has, but if he tends to be a pleaser, Though, that's the hardest thing for a pleaser to do because, and I'm, I, I'm this is coming from a pleaser here, okay, is we we want everybody to be okay. We want we don't want to rock the boat. We want everything to be okay. But the, and there that can be a good thing on one hand because we we do tend to be peacemakers. But God never called us to be peacemakers to the extent that we become a doormat. And I think right now your mother in law has crossed the line and she's kind of creating a doormat out of your husband in this situation. And, and she may or may not realize that. Like you said, she's doing things to try to put a wedge between you and right. your husband. That is so far out of bounds. Right. Anybody that's coming to put a wedge between you and your spouse, that is that that's so unhealthy. Well, and she and, said manipulative. That's yeah, the word. That is and and that's what you have to not to interject or interrupt, but yeah, go right, just go agreeing with you that and agreeing with the person who wrote this, like you're you're not crazy for feeling this way. Like you're right to yes. want your husband, you know, your right to want unity in your marriage and to not have any outside force, even a relative, creating division and distraction to the level that it's happening here. And right. so 
just really practical to try to kind of focus on some some solutions. The first first thing is you and your husband, or if, if you're in a situation like this with an in-law, who, whoever might be listening out there, um, you've got to get unity in your marriage of what this should look like. Yes. Because right now it sounds like there's there's not unity. That, that he feels one way, you feel another way. And it often takes a third party outside the family, a professional Christian mediator, counselor to come in and and help you guys find unity as a first step. Um, we have marriage mediators here at Exo Marriage that are m- amazing at this. It's a safe place for you to have these conversations via phone or Skype. You can find them at xomarriage.com slash help. And if you'll go there uh, or meet with a, a counselor or trusted mentor in your area that's not a relative, that doesn't have any you know, any underlying, you know, allegiances right. that are going to make them impartial, less, less partial, mm-hmm. um, meet with somebody. And that conversation or those series of conversations could really help get you unstuck, help you realize where some things are out of bounds. Because to your husband, if he, if he's grown up with his mom acting this way, it feels normal for him. Something can feel normal even if it's unhealthy, oh, if it yeah. happens long enough. And if you grew up in a household where, you know, the parents leaned on the kids for codependent relationships and, you know, there was there was unhealthy dynamics then, you're going to grow up feeling like that's normal and that's healthy. Right. And it might take somebody from the outside saying, now here biblically and practically is why that's unhealthy and why you and your spouse need to have a unified plan for moving forward. You know, absolutely. And I know this is delicate and I don't know your mother-in-law and I don't know her personality. And maybe there are some real needs that she has that she cannot do herself, you know, especially if she is a widow and there's no other kids who can help. There are some needs that maybe your husband and you, you know, speaking to the wife here could help out with. Or maybe if you have kids who are old enough to help too, the grandkids can help out with with those things. And so here's what I think needs to happen is you need to sit down with your husband and talk through these things and say, like, listen, we've got to put some boundaries in place. So how about this? How about we decide by looking at our family schedule, the two of us being autonomous adults in a marriage, in a family where we need to make our own decisions. Let's look at our calendar and say, okay, on this day or this day, maybe it's one or two days a week. Those are the days that we can help your mother. Okay. And we will, we will designate those days or those hours, however it needs to look. It's going to look different in every family, but particularly in this family, like maybe a certain, like on Saturdays, from, you know, 10 to to three, we're going to help her do these different things that she needs us to do. And then say, okay, I'm going to bring this, you know, your husband being the son, whoever's in-law is the one with the issue. It needs to be that child that goes. Like if it's your mom who's creating the issue, you need to go to your mom yourself and address the issue with her because she's going to forgive you a lot more (laughs) in time than she will with your spouse. Okay. If that makes sense. Am I saying that in a clear way? Because we've just seen where this can backfire. So, you know, your husband needs to go to his mom and say, mom, we love you so much, but I'm finding that, that these demands you're putting on me are unrealistic and it's really hurting my marriage. And I know as my mom, you want me to have a good marriage. You raised me to want a good marriage, mom. And you may not realize, like give her the benefit of the doubt. You probably don't realize that these demands are hurting us. And if she and a lot of in-laws who are, you know, in the dynamic of putting their, their son or daughter against the, their spouse, they may say, well, it's all her fault. It's all your wife's fault. She's the one trying to take you from me. He needs to stand very strong and say, no, I, I am my own man here coming to you as your son saying, I love my wife and I can't let this, this lack of boundaries and these consistent demands hurt my marriage. And mom, because I love you, because I respect you, I'm coming to you and saying, here are the days that we can help you because we want to help you. We're a family. We want to have a good relationship with you, but we can't just do it on a whim. And you know? it can't all be on your it terms. It can't all be on your terms. That's I'm a grown man now. Works. I have my own wife and family, and I need you to understand that we want to help you, but sometimes you're going to have to give a little. And here's what's going to happen. Most most likely she's going to kick and scream. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell you she's used to getting, she's her, used way. To getting her way. She's going to kick and stri- scream. She's going to maybe call names. I don't know what her style is, or she may do the silent treatment, which maybe you think is like the greatest gift you've ever had in yeah, a while. Yeah, She thinks she's punishing you and you're like, but you're like, my life just got a whole lot easier. Awesome. She's not calling at all. <laughs> but we know in, in all, in all seriousness, that's not healthy, no, right? No. The goal is to have a good relationship here, but to have it within healthy boundaries. And so let's say she gives you the cold, you know, silent treatment, so be it. But you guys, as a husband and wife, have to stick to your boundaries. And that's where this is the hardest 
thing to do yeah. because it's so easy to go back to old ways and say, well, let's just deal with her. She's used to getting her old way, her, her way. And so her making a fuss is worse. Let's just give her what she wants. Do not do that because you're feeding the monster. And I don't mean that, that she's a monster, but you're feeding that thing inside of her that is okay. She, she's, you know, she, she's been allowed to get her way for a while. And so it's made her expect that. And it creates, whenever we as people are in that dynamic, it brings out the worst side of us. And so by you not being enablers and really setting healthy boundaries and then following through with those boundaries in the most loving and caring and respectful way possible, I promise you in time, and I can't give you a specific time, but in time, she will eventually respect those boundaries because she wants to have a relationship with you guys. It's so true. And if you need a a book, to help you establish those boundaries. Like I said, hopefully, eventually, we're going to have our in-law book out. It'll be but, super specific. Which will be very specific. Dynamics, but yeah. uh, in the meantime, there's a classic Christian book called Boundaries by doctors John Townsend and Henry Cloud that that just brilliantly outlines the, the biblical case for this and the practical ways that this can look um, and gives you, the, gives you the words, gives you the tools, and it could... It could it could really help. And in the meantime, keep praying, praying for unity in your marriage, praying for your mother-in-law, because the bottom line is she's she's probably a hurting person right. who herself Absolutely. just has the same human needs we all have. She wants to be loved. She wants to feel protected and provided for. And yes, she's going about meeting those needs in an unhealthy way right now and in a manipulative way. But the needs themselves are are natural needs, and so right, yeah. you know, pray that you'd have compassion for her, but also you know, pray specifically for solutions and for the courage and strength to you know put those boundaries in place that we've talked about. Um, and you know what? In time, things will get healthier, but it usually gets a little harder before it, it gets does. better. Yep. But you gotta you gotta stay the course. And honor, keep honoring your mom, but realize that honoring your parents in adulthood no longer means obeying them. When you're a child, honoring your parents means obeying your parents. As an adult, that's not at all what it means. Right. And sometimes you're going to have to go against what they want for you, uh, because the best way to honor them and honor God and honor your marriage is to is to say no. Um, and go ahead. Absolutely. And I just want to say, too, to add to that. Uh, and, and Dave often, he so wisely has spoken to this. Sometimes as our parents age and as we we grow up and we're on our own, sometimes honoring our parents is forgiving our parents, yeah. even yeah. if an apology never comes, because what you don't want to happen is to live in resentment towards your mom to the point or towards your mother-in-law to the point where there's no longer a healthy relationship at all. And there's been so much hurt and disrespect going on, maybe even if it's one-sided that you're not able to have that relationship. And I know that's not your heart. I mean, I can tell that this wife who wrote us, that's not her heart. She wants to have peace in all those relationships. And so the best thing as, as the wife that you can do, since she's your mother-in-law, she's not your mom, she's your mother-in-law, is bite your tongue and <laughs> bite it hard, okay? Because you don't want to say something that she's going to hold as ammo and that you're going to regret later right. because the ultimate goal is that one day you guys can have a, an amicable and maybe even enjoyable relationship. Yeah, that's the goal. And that's our prayer for you is that God would bring so much healing that you go from just surviving this dynamic right. to actually having a thriving, uh, mutually beneficial friendship and connection and multi-generational uh, gift there. Yes. And so we're praying that for you and for everybody in that dynamic. Again, if you want to talk with someone to help you navigate the road ahead, our marriage mediators are an amazing resource. You can reach them at www.xomarriage.com slash help. Um, we, as always, love to connect with you guys on social media. You can find us on Instagram at Dave and Ashley Willis. Just search the word marriage on Facebook, and you can find us there. And, uh, and we do our best to answer the questions you send there as well. Sweetie, any final words of wisdom? I think you said it all, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you again for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying your summer, and we will look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>